I think the best way to start a behind the scenes is showing behind the scenes. Also, I wanted to start by horrifying people with the unmanaged cable mess that this is behind my studio. This is not finished. This is where it's at because I'm still figuring out where things go. Once I figure out where everything's go, I will take the time to cable management. In the short term, there's just going to be a lot of this going on and whatever that is over there. Now, this is part of the studio design because this is the opposite wall of the studio. That down there is just a series of USB ports. That's how all the computers and everything are back here. There are actually no computers in my studio and there are essentially a couple main components. First, that's the ingest server as I call it. That ingests all the video. It has several HDMIs hanging off the back. Those are all the inputs that bring the video in. Those are HDMI keystones, which we'll have on the other side that we plug the cameras and different feeds into. And there's a USB capture card and another one because this one loops through this computer over here, which is my main computer that allows me to actually dual purpose a camera as a webcam. Uh, maybe I'll do a more in-depth on that, but all I'm doing is looping it through twice through two different capture cards. Uh, that way I can use one camera for two different devices. So they daisy chain to each other, the two devices. It allows you to use the camera for a webcam or use it for the videos. Then of course my Synology server, the one 10 gig switch, which is kind of for now nestled in between here, Unify switch, and then 10 gig TrueNAS server down here for all the videos. And then, you know, got to duplicate all the data. So there's at least two copies here and one copy offsite. So another TrueNAS server down there. And then I have my Synology, which does the video cameras and some Synology things. And then the home assistant that I will do a video on because that's the automation tool I use for all this. And of course, you may have noticed the rubber on the walls. We'll talk about that later. It's basically loaded vinyl and helps with all the sound deadening because that's a furnace. That's a workbench because this is the work area because I did most of the building from a raw empty basement to this with just me and my friends. And that is going to be where the bathroom is. And there's currently just this foam stopping the hole in the wall that would be into my office. This is going to be a whole bathroom space. So this is the raw behind the scenes look. And then we're gonna leave the basement area. Well, partially, this is my living space we're building down here. My wife's putting carpet in. That's all the boxes for the square carpets. They're peel and stick. So that'll be built unrelated at all to the studio. But what is related is we have these cool doors that we just slide closed so no one has to look at what's going on in there, but it'll get cleaned up and I'll do another video after I do the wiring cleanup. Then if you can't tell by the glow coming through the edges of this door, and yes, this is all in my basement. This uh, is another one of the barn doors with a slide on it. And then we're into the studio space. And yeah, this is how we built it all out. It's where it's at. It's not necessarily complete because it's always going to be a work in progress, but we'll go over here and a lot of people ask where the desk came from. Pretty simple, Ikea. It's just an Ikea countertop. Uh, bolted to the wall over there. I'll be leaving lots of links down below to all the different parts and components we use to build it. And when we talk about this in a moment, I'll show you some of the pictures of build along the way. Now we have the microphones and everything and the lights all mounted to these bars up at the top. And this is being a basement. This is a poured cement foundation. And this is just black pipe I picked up at the hardware store. So you just get this black pipe and they will cut it at most hardware stores right to length. Uh, the length is a little bit short, so we actually had to put one joiner in and bring it all the way over there. And then you just use these bar clamps. Now, this is mostly from my old studio at my office. So it's the same. If you watch that video, it's the same bars. Well, not exactly. These had to be a little bit longer than the ones at the studio, but the concept is the same and the same clamps. This keeps everything off the floor. And back to, as I had mentioned, really, there's nothing on the floor but some carpet and, uh, well, rugs and those USBs, which are still a little cable management to do under there, but essentially everything plugs in the USB, just like you've seen on the other side. That's what how all this plugs in. So there's simply no computer in here, pretty simple. Now we still have the TV stand and this is an egress window. I got to get a curtain for all of this. That'll actually cover all this up um, just to make it look nice, but that's, you know, future project there. There's the door that will go to the bathroom. It doesn't exist right now. Wanted a bathroom in here for convenience because it's all the way downstairs. And why not have a private bathroom next to your studio? Makes sense. Now, this is how I see things. This is my main studio cam, the Canon C100. 
We've got the teleprompter on there. I don't really script out my videos, but I want to make sure I get things right. And if you can see, it says like CVE 20214442. That's how I'm able to stare dead at the camera and sound smart and read things, hopefully accurately, but still sometimes, hey, mistakes are made. Over here, this is a field monitor that lets me know what things look like in the main camera. This is my Sony camera that gives me a view when I'm looking at this monitor and sharing the screen. And then the sound deadening is provided from this Automute blanket here, plus these tiles on the wall. Tiles on the wall aren't going to be really big on the sound deadening, but they help. Then this is a drop ceiling, specifically what they refer to as high NRC to kill sound as well. That's why it goes from echoey when I was in the hallway to such a nice quietness when you get inside of here. Now, I do have this big bean bag over here. Um, my wife bought this a while ago. We weren't using it, so I tossed it in here. I sometimes sit and read on my emails and stuff with my laptop here because it's kind of comfortable. But it's, you know, kind of a cool accessory in here. And throwing these uh, rugs on here helps with some of the silence and sound deadening. As well as, these are just from Ikea as well, these are to stop any reflective sound that heads towards these walls. And eventually we'll be covering up some shelves that don't exist yet. I have a few things from the old office here, but I'm going to put some shelves behind there. And instead of putting anything nice or wanting, having to look at messy things on the shelf, I'll just be putting these up. And if I need something, I can just walk behind them. There's, you know, a couple feet of space back there. Then we'll spin around over here and sit down in front of the camera. And now in front of the camera, and this is ultimately what it does when you have all this stuff, all the wires and everything over there, you get this simple, clean look right here. Or at least I think it's relatively clean. Uh, it makes it pretty distraction-free from me creating videos. And this is also the reason I moved it to my basement. And so I had a distraction-free place. And I say distraction-free because I'm easily distracted. Even though my staff would leave me alone properly, I couldn't help but compel myself to go in and see what's going on in the other room. So I still have my business. I still have my well, somewhat of a studio space there. And that's where some of the bigger projects are going to be filmed. I'm not going to drag servers over here to my basement. So I'll film some stuff there. We have all of our demo rack and lab rack stuff, and then bring that footage back here where I can focus. There's nothing around me to distract me to do something else and get work done. Now, a little bit about the build I want to switch to, and I do use the stream deck, and that's one of the reasons for the way the studio is built with the camera feeds and being able to switch between them. So this isn't an edit. This is literally me just hitting a button, and then I just turn my head towards that monitor with that Sony camera right here. And then we can talk a little bit about how I actually built this. Now, I can take when I'm sitting here and I'm on this computer, and we're going to go ahead and uh, move over and I can slide over to that screen. This is something you can't really see, but it's how I'm able to grab and resize things just using OBS and move myself around. Uh, I use Barrier to have one keyboard and mouse, but multiple computers under control. But now let's quickly get to this right here. This is the raw studio space and what it looked like before we started. It's just a standard poured cement basement. There's that egress window that, uh, you know, that's it. Uh, we actually use the egress window to throw all the wood in through and get it in there. And these are what these projects start out with, just a big pile of lumber and me spending a lot of time on YouTube figuring out how to do things. I'm not afraid to try new things and dive into, you know, trying my hand a little bit at construction. And uh, this is how we built this, you know, following some best practice, calling on some friends that had some experience doing it. Um, as long as you're doing a lot of labor, they're usually more than happy to come over and point and tell you what to do, such as I did all the electrical, but I did have a master electrician friend come over and point because I said, hey, uh, I'll buy you a beer if you come over and just point and tell me what to do. It's uh, usually a better way to get people to come over and help you rather than, hey, can I use your expertise? And I offered to pay him as well. And he, it's my neighbor. And he said, nah, you don't have to pay me for it. I said, you know, I value people's time. Uh, he was willing to trade as long as he didn't have to pull any wire because, well, I don't blame him. <laughs> Uh, this is what it looked like actually when it was almost done. I want to point this out. This is that Ikea desk. It is just a butcher block desk along with some strut things holding it up here. Bought these over at Lowe's. So it's not an expensive desk. It's not, it's custom, but it's not particularly, um, nothing really special about it. I think it's actually the walnut butcher block. I don't remember what, exactly which one I bought. I've already lost the receipt, I think. I or it's been put away somewhere and I'm not sure where. So I tried to find it before the video. But then we put the sound tiles on the wall. There's the 3D printed case for the uh, Raspberry Pi. There's the sound tiles that we put on the wall here, that auto mute blanket, just another view of it. 
And that helps with all the sound deadening, keeping some of the echo to an absolute minimum in here. And that's pretty much it for the studio build. It's, you know, I didn't do a lot of the video when it came to like actually building it because watching me swing a hammer, not my expertise. That's not somewhere where I thought I should make a build video, like how to build a studio, because I, I'm more than willing to share all the parts and everything else, but actually watching me do it, I don't think um, I probably would tell a lot of bad information. I don't think we need the internet having more bad information on it. So I decided to not film myself. And also, if you watch me build something, you'll watch me have a tool in my hand and walk in circles and look for the tool that's in my hand. So yeah, I get confused a lot when I'm building stuff. I, it's really not my forte. I did it because one, I like the pride of just building it all myself. I thought it would be kind of a fun challenge. It certainly turned out to be challenging. Also, if you're not aware right now in the end of 2021 and still continuing on here in February of 2022, there's kind of a work shortage. So everyone seems to be really, really busy and there's not enough workers. So some of the places we called for uh, to ask about building stuff, they're like, hey, no problem. We can start that project in a couple months. And we're like, oh, um, that's kind of a long ways out. I can only get started now. I did contract out the mudding of the drywall and the ceiling, uh, but the rest of it is done myself. Just uh, went out and started building it. But nonetheless, I will leave links to everything I talked about down below. I feel free to leave comments. I, I learned a lot from watching other people on YouTube. So I wanted to throw this out there, how I did this studio and some of the things I use for it. I'm always interested in different ideas. Uh, YouTube doesn't allow people to post links anymore. So I will have this linked over in my forums. If you want to have a more in-depth discussion about this or say hi to me on Twitter, or wherever uh, social media I'm at when you're watching this video. All right. And thanks.